You know what I find to be the real enigma of this game? If this old person is basically stealing everybody else's life to obtain immortality, and they're that evil, why aren't they also vain enough to, you know, trim a few years off and look young, to have some vitality? Maybe they're just too stupid. Hiya folks, Fruit and Doggy here, getting back into Enigmatis, and when we left off, yep, trying to figure things out. Let's see, the townsfolk. Could that be the bell? Yep. Seems the bell served as a medium to somehow control the citizens of Maple Creek. Entrancing them and, sum and summoning them to the church for some dark prayers. I have to silence the bell to free them. And I will mention that when it comes to hidden object tropes, this is just classic. You know, supernatural elements. Oh, okay. There are dozens of people in the church, they are all in a sort of a trance, constantly uttering what well, I assume to be dark prayers. Scary! What are they doing? That strange man is among them, the brother who broke into my room and took that dagger right in front of me. His eyes are still glowing, just like the others. The thief from my room. Yeah, I don't know why. Pin object games just seem intimately tied to the supernatural. It could just be... I'd rather not go any further. These people look scary. I mean, it could just be... The dagger that man stole from my room. Basic and simple events. Few candles are missing. Is their actual arrangement of any importance? No handle lock. No lock. How can one open it? I mean, I don't know why the games always insist upon it, but it's just part of how they always go. A ritual dagger. Blood stains its blade. It must have served in some dark rituals. What for? And where? New objective. Murder weapon. <sighs> Alright. Nope. I mean, I don't really know when, you know, that association first came to uh, pass and why it has, you know, just constantly insisted upon it that it's never let it go, but it is book by J.S. Collins. It is intimately tied. stumbling around on your own every single time you want to go anywhere. Though I, I will admit, having to go to every single little place in somewhat of a maze can be very obnoxious. But here's a new one. What was that shape? Oh, was that it? Nope, not quite. License plate, done. Pill package, done. Binoculars, red grapes, Garden Dwarf, Pocket Watch, a wall in it, Rope and a Bat, I don't remember seeing those items, Rope and a Bat, Binoculars, uh, Pruning Scissors, a uh, what? That is a horrid lie. Oh, there's the garden thing. Pocket watch. Padlock. Array. Rope. And a bat. Array, huh? Rope and a bat. Oh, okay, found it. See, I wish it gave you a time. Yes, got it in a minute. I don't have to worry about the time anymore. But I don't know why, you know, there is that association between, uh... Wait, said something about the key. Oh, I guess I could... I was just able to do that, right? 
Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I got rope for the basement, right? Yep, okay, okay. Which is ironic, because I'm using rope there, so... Huh? Why was it glowing at me? I don't know. Like, when I see those glows randomly sometimes, it's like, is there... This isn't how I remember it. Someone's been here and examined the body. Yeah, you know, sometimes it really throws me off when uh, things aren't where they were before, and it's like, oh, geez, that freaks me out. Or not that, but the, uh, what was I trying to say? Basically, it's just kind of a nuisance when I keep seeing those shimmery effects, and it's like, oh, it's not actually indicating anything, but... You know, it's just annoying. It's like, there's nothing actually to look at, it's just doing it. I don't know why it does that. Let's see here, leaf, key. Now you want me to find the leaf? You've had leaves all over the place and now you want me to find one. That's just obnoxious. There's the eagle. Beats pump eagle. Beats, huh? Seen a lot of ducks in this place of all things. Is that a key? Yeah. Oh, there's the pump. Bees, leaf, and an eagle. I don't know what that means by. Oh, there's the eagle. Oh, there's the bees. A leaf. All the times you want me to find a leaf, I didn't find that immediately. You would think the organic object would really stand out in the room. Oh, there. There. Ah, because it was an organic object. Rusty key. Someone's in the boring house, footsteps lead to the basement, and the body's been examined. Man from the gas station or someone else? What do you look for? Let's see, the nave. Oh, it actually even says the basement. Oh, the rope, the rope, I got distracted. Uh, rope. Mark floating in the water, but it's out of my reach. I can't add more water to it. Okay. So what is it saying I can do? Back to the backyard. Oh, I got the key. So I can't actually go there. I don't know, I do find it bizarre how all of these games always insist upon having the supernatural involved. Oh, turn it. Please don't do that! Useless, there's a crack in the bottom. No wire possibly, they just turned it off to the for first frost. Oh, the entire thing. I mean, I don't know, it seems like you could have this style of game still have, you know, an interesting story, something to keep people's interest and not require these really cheesy supernatural stories that are so cliche and trite that kind of lose interest because they all do it. I think it'd be interesting if one of these games was like, why? We're not going to put in those sorts of elements. It doesn't apply the story. It doesn't help it along. Why would we do that? But I do admit it's also funny how uh, certain objects tend to, like, within the same game, tend to appear multiple times. They're not the same. They'll look different. But, you know, there's multiple leaves. There's multiple flashlights. You know, multiple brushes. I don't know. It just seems like you would be more... <sighs> What's the word? Variable in what items you're hiding around and throwing out there. 
even what sort of items need to be utilized in puzzles and stuff. But I don't know, that's just kind of my thoughts on the matter. You know, after a while, they just all kind of blend together and none of them really stand out after a while. That's why I don't take too much interest in these games. Even though this one's highly rated, it's like, okay, what is this really doing that makes it so interesting or distinct or... And as far as I can tell, it doesn't really do anything. It's just... It's good, it's playable, it does what it's supposed to, but... I'm not like, whoa, holy cow, this game is amazing. And that's typically the results. And I think maybe that's why they do tend to follow that pattern. It's like, okay, as long as we hit this certain threshold of things, we'll all be mediocre, we'll all kind of blend together, but, you know, we'll all be average and we'll all do, do well enough to hit a certain number of cells and make some level of profit. Because, I mean, again, I don't want to overassume the simplicity of uh, designing a game, but I would think these would have to be on the easier side considering how many of them there are. <laughs> Camera and tape. Especially since uh, it seems like some companies just kind of rely on making these games solely. And again, stick to what you know, perhaps, but I don't know. I'll play these games, especially if I have them in my inventory. Well, yeah, that's the only way I could play them, but... I don't go out of my way looking for them, and I don't get excited if I see them on sale or anything. Hey. I imagine if you're watching this, you probably have somewhat of a different perspective. You do really like these games, you do think they're interesting. And if that's the case, what is it about them that appeals to you? Is it because that they are kind of a safe game to go towards? You know what to expect. You know, so even though it may it may never hit a solid peak, it may never be like, wow, that was you know a thrilling ride, how amazing. You know, it's always gonna be at least a satisfying experience. I think a reasonable analogy or a comparison would be um, like those dollar word search puzzle books that you can find in the dollar store. So they might have like 50 to 100 puzzles. Um, you know, the ones with uh, a jumbled up letters all across the page and then maybe like 30 different words you have to find in circle. I guess some people, I don't know who strikes them out. I think that's insanity. If you don't circle the words, we're not on the same page. But, uh, you know what I mean? I think that's like the comparison. And I hope I'm not insulting anybody by making that comparison. I've played these games before, I've done word searches. <coughs> and I think they're kind of the same mindset, you know? They're approachable, they're easy. They kill a bit of time. I swear, I can't find this tape for the life of me. And I... What's ironic is the same sort of thing tends to happen. I can knock out several words fairly quickly and easily, but then, as I'm going through the word search, there'll be maybe two or three words that I cannot find for the life of me. And I'll have to go back and forth, and back and forth, multiple times. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> it can be very aggravating. Okay, why can I not find the tape? If you had to, uh... This wouldn't be too much of a stretch of the imagination, but... When I am looking for things around the house... I tend to remember where most stuff is around the house. I have a decent memory. Like, when I was going back through the... Uh, hidden object sections the second time, it's like, oh, I remember that. There, there, there. That's how my mind works. If I remember where something is or I have a general idea, I can find it quickly. But if I'm looking for it, 
I can look right past it multiple times. I am horrendous about that. It can be right in front of me. And I don't know. I have no idea why that is for me. That's just... Ah, jeez. I just trying to hurt. That's just the way my mind works, or my... I almost want to say my eyes. That's just how I am as a person, though. And I really am curious. Maybe that's one of those things that uh, differentiates me and people who really like these games a lot is maybe when they see these hidden object areas, it's like, bam, bam, you know. Or maybe they're a little bit more slow, but then they're more consistent. So, whereas I'm like, oh my gosh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's like, oh, let's see here. This one's a little tricky. Oh, there it is, of course. I don't know, I mean, I just think that's kind of interesting about life is how different we all are. You know, that's one of the things that makes life interesting and worth, you know, living and... Oh, th I didn't even notice that. I was just randomly clicking. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what else I consider to be an enigma of this game? How in the world does this small town sustain its population? Considering that the pastor doesn't seem to be doing anything to draw in new people. I think that'd be part of his wickedness, but, you know, a town that barely sustains a couple dozen people. Sure, that's good enough. Why wouldn't it be? 